guys, here we go. Check out this beautiful 1994 Supra Turbo. And we're here with Tyler, also known as Tyler to Jay-Z locally. So Tyler, if you if you can, just tell us a little bit about the Supra and how it came about. Um, well, I've kind of always wanted one. I mean, I guess then again, who hasn't? But uh, anyway, about six, seven years ago, I started looking seriously for one. Um, was looking Craigslist, Auto Trader, Facebook, like every every single platform to try to find the right one. And kind of had a budget in mind, and you know, most everything was kind of outside that budget. And so eventually, like one month, I was just surfing, and I came across this little Facebook group that I was a member of that I was looking at like skylines and stuff in and here was the Supra just out of nowhere just kind of a one paragraph for sale ad and it looked perfect it was bone stock like twin turbo six speed everything oh, yeah. you want and like low mileage like 77,000 miles and I'm like holy crap it's like this is like actually within my budget so it didn't have all these mods when you got it no no, no. bone stock didn't yeah the old old school look yeah yeah so talked to the wife she was like all right, just do it. So went to go contact the guy. Next thing I know, the ad pops up and goes, car sold, pending, blah, blah, blah. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man. <laughs> like a month later, pops back up for sale again. And he goes, deal fell through, back up for sale. Yeah. And then before I could even get in touch with the guy, pending. Like another month goes by, and then it pops up for sale. And the price was reduced. And oh, I'm really? like, are you shitting me? Like, it's already, I mean... <laughs> It's like there's something going on you'll here. You have to edit that part. <laughs> it's all good. Are, are you kidding me? Like seriously, it's like it's already um, was already like a good price. Now it's an even better price. So I um, and then he goes, call me, you know, to discuss the vehicle. You know, deal fell, uh, financing fell through from the other buyer. So I just told him like, well, if you can do just slightly better, like I can give you all cash. So um, he ended up agreeing to that. And of course, this car was on the other side of the country, mind you. We set up an inspection for the following week. And then by the time, like the day before the inspection comes up, he's like, I'm sorry, bro. I got called for work. And it's, I have to oh, no for way. a month. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like just the whole time, like the deal, like everything yeah. about this car, is, it seemed so perfect. Like, of course, something like this has to go yeah. wrong. So he's like, well, like he wouldn't take any money from me, would not take any earnest money. That's a good thing. And uh, so a month later, he came back, everything went through, and yeah. <coughs> he wanted me to fly with cash, which is also kind of well, funny. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but that was another kind of funny part of it. I brought my, my one of my best friends and my mechanic with yeah. me uh, to do it. And I was like, what do we do if we can stop <laughs> with all this cash like through TSA? And my buddy's like, you just gonna play it cool and be like, Yo, when I'm gonna do drug buys, I bring twice as much cash as this. <laughs> I'm like, sure, that'll, that'll that'll be great. Yeah. That'll be great. Um, but yeah, no, we uh, went out there, drove it, uh, signed all the paperwork, and then went and saw uh, Fate of the Furious right after that in theaters. So, <laughs> really? Literally, it was in wow. theaters at the time. But there's one thing I gotta ask you about. And I know this might make things a little weird. Let's talk about your license plate real quick. <laughs> <laughs> what is that all about? Come on. All right, guys. Probably why I wasn't invited to the meeting. <laughs> Not a BMW. All right. So tell us a quick story about how that came about. Um, <laughs> you know, honestly, so my first, that wasn't my first vanity plate. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, one of the big jokes about these cars is that like everyone, you know, a lot of people buy nice cars because yeah. they want to attract chicks with them and blah, blah, blah. Like this car, not that car. It attracts twenty-something <laughs> year old dudes. As we saw, as yeah. so, as we experienced. Uh, yeah, yeah. like if before uh, we started doing this, yeah, some some like 18, 19 year old kids, like guys came up and were drooling all over it. So my old license plate was probate. Oh yeah. Because basically, you know, <laughs> that's true. That. Well, my wife didn't really like that one very much. <laughs> so um, I was trying to think of a new one. And during the time we were doing this build, so we did the build from like 2018 to 2020. Yeah. And so during that time, the Mark V had just launched. Oh. Oh, and there was there a lot go. of, you know, <laughs> a lot of people were upset about the fact that like BMW did a lot of the, you know, they used a lot of BMW parts for it and it was built at BMW plants. So yeah. I just thought it'd be fun to troll <laughs> the Mark 5 owners. Just, so, just yeah, it. if you see this license plate, don't get triggered. It's just a joke. All <laughs> no, right, it's, it's just, not meant it's to trigger all anybody. Fun. All right, guys. So, all but, but one thing about the Supra, right? Yes. About what it's most famous for is what's under the hood, right? So and the looks of it, right? It could be debated, right? I thought it was the wing. Oh, the wing too, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can say the wings. Uh, but let's take a look under the hood and let's go through that first before we do some exterior, before you tell us about the exterior. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Ready? Wow. To Jay-Z engine, no shh. 
shit. And what did I tell you? I retract my previous statement. You know what? So I uh, kind of went a little different with the build, like same but different. Um, so obviously if you've seen a lot of single turbo 2JZ builds, um, it kind of has that same kind of flow. Um, to it, but we used a couple of different components. Um, for one, we didn't use any off-the-shelf turbo kit. Like everything for this car, for the most part, was pieced together. So oh, wow. um, okay. the turbo is a Zona Rotor XR9567 uh, turbo. Um, so it's a dual ball bearing, um, single scroll, full V band. Smoke. We decided to, the intercooler is a Garrett core. Yeah, um, let's take a look at it. It's a 28 inch um, intercooler instead of a 24, just to kind of fill that up a little bit. Yeah. The uh, end tanks, all the piping is all handmade. Oh, wow. Um, if you look at all of the couplers, we went with LPS Alpha Lock racing couplers. Yeah. So there's no silicone or anything in there at all. And, and how much power would you say you're putting out right now? Um, so this is doing give or take about 600 of the wheels depending on what dyno you put it on so yeah some dy like a dyno jet's gonna be a little more uh, mustang probably a little less yeah so. and is the what you know with the big turbo does it spool really late or is it you know, um, kind of in the middle it's it's quick for how big it is yeah. um it doesn't spool as quickly as say like a twin scroll does but yeah. i mean you're hitting full boost you know between 4500 and 5000 rpms like that's full on like balls to the walls. Yeah, and just look at just how clean everything is here, guys. Just, you know, it just doesn't do any justice. When you see this in person, I'm telling you guys. All right, now that you guys have seen the engine bay, so let's talk about the exterior. I'm telling you guys, the paint is immaculate, the wheels are dope. You guys, I, actually, I'm just gonna let Tyler talk about it. So, um, kind of the idea with the exterior is keep it very OEM plus. Yeah. Um, like the biggest thing is, this day and age putting body kits on stuff like that devalues your car yeah. and not that i particularly care about how much it's worth because i don't really plan on getting rid of it it's kind of more like part of the nostalgia of having the car is having it in you know somewhat of its original condition so um, the exterior like body wise is all stock um, However, all of the lighting on the ex outside of the car has all been updated to 97 plus. So the headlights are the 97 plus, uh, the turn signal markers, um, the front corners are the actual JDM front markers, um, and then the rear taillights and all of the emblems are all 97 plus. Oh, wow. Um, the other big notable thing for the emblems is this has the um, uh, factory option gold badging, oh, yeah. which is incredibly rare this day and age. And this is a 94, so this car should have never come with any of that stuff, but at some point, somebody who owned the car before me decided, I want this, and they spent however, <laughs> a couple hundred bucks at the dealership and put it oh, all yeah. on. I remember, yeah, in the 90s, that was a big thing. That was a big options package to upgrade the gold emblems, yep. you know, in Toyota. Yeah, Yeah, and now it's like they're on obtainium. Like, yeah. you know, they're like thousands and upon thousands of dollars to buy those no emblems. No way. Yeah, because there's only like a couple sets left in existence that haven't been molested, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, so um, in addition to the stock body, we did add a TBT uh, front carbon fiber front lip um, and TBT carbon fiber side splitters. So those were added um, at the end of the build in 2020. So, um, and I still wanted to use some type of carbon accent to the rear, but I haven't quite figured out what yet and nobody okay, really listen. makes anything. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it's gonna have to be custom probably. And then um, other exterior stuff like uh, we, gutted the mirrors and put JDM power folding mirror guts in there. So we've got the power folding mirrors. So, but just, you know, little stuff like that. That's cool. It's OEM plus, you know, it's it's not too wild like some of the other supers that you see online. It's just clean, OEM plus. That's like my style. We pretty, pretty much got the same, similar style. That's pretty much how I would do it, to be honest with you. And then you got your my Starbucks latte wheels, T37s. <laughs> your basic, basic, <laughs> um, but they're the sagas. Yeah. Um, I had, I had bronze TEs on my last car. I just really loved them. Yeah. Um, you just, you can't go wrong. Pretty much the basic bitch, you know, wheel yeah, to exactly. run now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Starbucks <laughs> vanilla latte. <laughs> yeah. So. But they, 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 look, they look good, though, but you can't go wrong with TEs, though, at the end of the day, right? They are, yeah, they are one of the, the OG wheels for sure. Yeah, and, you know, being, you know, someone who grew up in the 90s, Right, you know, it was weird because you know we would see these on the lot at the dealership lost. You know, I saw at the dealership there was like four or five of them, and they're like almost fifty thousand dollars. If you count for inflation, that's like eighty, ninety thousand dollars in today's money. So back in the nineties, these sat in lots just collecting dust. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and then now, I mean, even if you bought it for eighty grand, 
you know, you'd probably still make a little profit off of it if you sold it today. Sure. You know, but still, you know, at the end of the day, I know, see, Tyler could probably talk about his car for, t for two hours, um, but we're a little pressed for time. And the, Plus the, the best average YouTube video is 15 minutes. I'm not going to be beyond much beyond that. Yeah, <laughs> and most people stop watching after about yep. five minutes anyways, right? right. So 15 is kind of the happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm good. Uh, but, you know, more stuff in the interior. You know, interior is pretty much stock, pretty much. And yes, it is right-hand drive. Uh, left a left-hand drive, I mean. American drive, right? Yes. What do you call it? Yeah. Correct, correct. Drive. <laughs> correct hand drive, yeah. You know, I don't mind left-hand drive, but I prefer. I mean, I don't mind right-hand drive, but I prefer a left-hand drive. That's just a personal preference. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do one more thing I got to ask you. Now, the movie, right? The top. You see in the movie, oh, right? God. They just bust it open, right? Doesn't work like Doesn't that. Doesn't work like that. There's a whole process to There's it. There's a whole process. Dude would have died. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, what's his face? He would have gotten shot right off that semi yeah. if he would have had to actually do that. It's you have you have a little wrench and you gotta take each corner, you gotta undo each corner, and then you gotta lock in the middle, and then it comes out. It's about a five minute process, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> a funny story related to that though is um, a lot of us, because of how much of a pain in the ass it is to to do that, if we're driving around during the summer and say we park for lunch, a lot of times we'll just walk the roof without actually bolting it down while we go in so we don't get like oh. bird shit in our interior yeah <laughs> well what some guys have done is they've done that like in their garage uh -huh. and they oh, you no know way. forgotten to put the lock no on way. and then they'll <laughs> drive around and not think anything of it and then as soon as they hit freeway speeds <laughs> And then, no of course, way. there's always like a semi right behind you when that happens, <laughs> runs over your, your roof, crushes it, and they're like four grand. So, <laughs> so it's a really oh, expensive man, lesson no way. if you can even learn it. Yeah. So. Oh, let's look at the trunk. Oh, yes. I forgot about this. So yeah. here you got um, basically it's all everything back here is JL Audio. Yeah. So uh, JL Audio 13 TW5. It's a 13 and a half inch like pancake flat sub. And then a uh, 600.4 uh, and a 750.1 HD amplifier. So um, the 750 is powering the sub, and the um, 600 is powering uh, two Focal uh, K2 power um, components up front, and then a set of the carbon Kevlar uh, Focals in the rear. Oh, that's awesome. There you go. And what exhaust is that? What do we say? The um, so it started its life as an HKS. Uh -huh. um, carbon fiber uh, carbon ti yeah. and then so what they don't tell you is when they say it's a, th a 3.75 inch exhaust what they really mean is that the end of it is 3.75 yeah. <laughs> so where it bolts up to the downpipe is actually only three inches Ooh. so because we wanted to do three and a half inch turbo back we ended up just hacking the whole thing apart converting it all to v-band and now it's three and a half inches all the way back oh, that's awesome so well, there you go all right guys so that's just a quick rundown of Tyler's 1994 Mark V Supra. If Mark you guys, five. Mark IV, so, why did I say Mark V? That's the second time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't correct you the first time. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, if I said Mark V, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyways, um, check out his um, social media, Tyler 2JZ. I'll put a link down in the description below. Be sure to follow. Tyler's a really cool guy. You'll see him in a lot of our videos. Uh, but anyways, that is it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Peace out. Peace.